Okay, this first one is just a straightforward probability question where we take the number of ways um, the event can happen over all the number of all possible events. Okay, so this is going to be consistent through all of the problems in this little set. Um, and it will be how many ways this thing can happen. What, what thing are we doing? We're choosing a single number, just one number. Um, so how many ways can you choose a number from 1 to 50? You count them all up, you'll see there are 50 possibilities. So we just need to figure out how many ways can this thing happen, and it'll be out of 50. So how many, well, what's the probability that you'll pull, pick a number that's less than 27? Well, how many numbers are less than 27? There's 1 through 26. There's 26 numbers that are less than 27. That's a probability of 26 out of 50. Um, we can simplify this. We got 13 out of 25. This is a prime number, so it's not going to simplify anymore. So there we go. Um, a multiple of 6. Okay, so how many multiples of 6 are there between 1 and 50? We could just count them up. We got 6, we got 12, we got 18, 24. Um, 30, 36, 42, and 48, and then beyond that we got 54, which is too big. It's bigger than 50, so it's not between 1 and 50. Um, so let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Also, if you wanted to consider a faster way of counting these, this is 6 times 8, and 6 times 8 is 48, you know, that's, and 48 is less than 50. 6 times 9 is 54, so that's too big, so there must be 6 times 1 through 6 times 8, so that would be 8 multiples of 6. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's 8 of them. 8 out of 50, that's a probability that a, a multiple of 6 will be chosen. Uh, we could do uh, 4 out of 25, and uh, no more common factors, so 4 out of 25. Okay going to draw a card out of a pack of cards, a single card. So how many ways can a single card be drawn? That's what we want to be considering as we enter into new problem sets. How many ways can you draw a single card? Well, you can draw a single card in 52 different ways. There are 52 cards. You draw a single card, there are 52 ways to do that. Okay, so pretty simple. What's the probability that you'll draw a 5 out of that deck of cards? Well, that's going to be out of 52. How many ways are there to draw a 5 in all? Well, there are 4 or 5, so one in each suit. So 5 out of 52, or sorry, I don't know why I said 5, 4. 1 in each suit, there are 4. We simplify this down, this is divisible by 4, this is divisible by 4, 1 out of 13. Okay, next, we're going to draw a card other than a spade. So that if, when we get a card, we want it to not be a spade. Of course, it's still going to be out of 52, because we can draw a card in 52 different ways. How many ways uh, out of those 52 will you draw a not spade? Well, there's, um, there's 52 cards, there's 13 spades, so how many are there that aren't spades? Um, let's see, there's uh, 6, 39, 39 cards that are not spades, so 39 out of the 52. Um, let's see. Good. Uh, so these are they don't share any common factors, so we won't worry about it. We'll try and simplify that. Okay, we're gonna pick for a lottery. We need to pick six numbers. Okay, we can pick from one to twenty. No repeats, obviously, because uh, you know when when they do a lottery, they pick a a numbered ball and they set it aside, and then you can't pick that number again. So you're not gonna pick repeats. Um, and order is not important. Okay. So whether you do pick uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, that's the same thing. Okay, so how many ways can six numbers be picked from 20 numbers in a way that order is not important? That's the number of all the different possibilities, right? So you got 20 things. Uh, we want to draw six of them. So we got, this sounds like a permutations or a combinations kind of a thing, okay? And whether it's permutations or combinations, we decide whether order is important. And it's not. 
So it's a combination. So if I pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, that's the same thing. That's describing a combination. It's just the existence of these six things together. Um, how many ways can you win? Assuming you buy one ticket, you can only buy, you know, you can only win one way. You pick a single number, and then there are 20 choose six, or 20 C6 uh, possible numbers to pick, possible combinations of six out of 20 numbers to pick. Um, so take out the old calculator, wait for it to start up. There we go. And 20 for math over probability. You get that guy, it's 6 and 38,760. It. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. The normal lottery, the multi-state lotteries, are going to be where order is important, and that's going to be much, much less likely. Uh, so you know that that's pretty good, um, given the other kinds of lotteries. And those lotteries are out of like 54 numbers or something like that. Don't play the lottery, kids. It's just it's crazy. Uh, rolling an odd number. So what's the probability of rolling an odd number? So let me describe the situation here a little bit better. Um, somebody actually rolled a die. Um, it looks like ooh, how many times? 150 times? Let me check the book here. Uh, 150 times, that's right. And so if we added all of these up, it should come out to be 150. Um, and here's what they did. They rolled it 150 times, and when they got a 1, they marked it. Okay, then they got a, a one again, they marked it again, they got a three, then they marked that, and they just kept track of all of the numbers that they got. And in the end, at a, after 150 rolls, they got one 27 times, two 22 times, three 18 times, and so on. Okay, so actually doing an experiment produces what we call experimental probability. And in an experiment with uh, six possible outcomes, 150 times is good, but it's not that big, right? So you're going to get some discrepancy between the experimental probability and what you would expect uh, theoretically. That would be the theoretical probability. Theoretical probability. Okay, that would be the ones that we have been calculating so far. What's the probability of drawing a five? What's the probability of drawing a not spade? Uh, theoretically, given the number of things that can happen and the probability that each thing is uh, equally likely, um, you know, we've been calculating probabilities, but here's a, the a uh, experimental probability. So what are the experimental and theoretical probabilities? Experimentally, um, for an odd number, we got 27 ones, 18 threes, and 27 fives, okay? So we add those together. We got 27 times 2, because we got that twice, plus 18. 18 times we got a 3. That's 72. 72 out of 150. Let's see, 72 divided by 2. We got 36. Divide that by 2. I'm not going to be able to divide the other one by 2. So we got uh, 36. 36 out of 75, that's uh, 15 times 5, divisible by 3, they're both divisible by 3 still, so we got uh, 12 out of 25, alright, so there is the uh, experimental probability, how does that compare to what we would think would happen, like what's the probability, um, theoretically, that we're rolling odd? Well, there are six equally likely, likely outcomes. We assume they're equally likely. Uh, and we should see an odd come up um, you know, about half the time, right? There, there are three odd numbers. There are six numbers all together. And that should come out to be one half. OK? If, uh, let's see, you know, if, if we rolled it 24 times, we would expect uh, an odd number to come up 12 out of the 24 times. This comes up 12 out of 25 times. Or if we want to consider out of 25 times, that should happen about 12 and a half times out of 25, right? That's exactly half of 25. So 12 out of 25, that's pretty right on, you know, and, and we can use that to make a decision about this, this die that it uh, seems fair. It seems like, 
it's not weighted on one side uh, to favor any particular number out of uh, others. So seems fair, seems to pass the test. All right. So that's what they're asking, to compare the two, experimental and theoretical. Experimentally, we should get 12 out of 25. Uh, theoretically, we should get one half, which is, you know, uh, for out of 25, you can't get 12 and a half out of 25, so it's pretty close. We should see about 12 or 13 out of 25, and that's what we got. Um, okay, this one's what we call a geometric probability. Okay, and you'll see why. Geometric just refers to shapes and stuff. Okay, um, really, it, the meaning of it is to measure the Earth and uh, to measure shapes. So anyway, the board itself, meaning from here to here, is an 18-inch diameter. And then this little guy right here, let's bring this out here, that is half an inch in diameter. So what's the probability of getting a bullseye, the inner bullseye, the red bullseye? Well, it's kind of hard to think, like, how many ways are there to hit the bullseye? There's actually, like, an infinite number of ways to hit that bullseye, if you really think about it. Um, and keep splitting the difference between two spots on the bullseye where I could hit with a dart, and uh, it, I could go on infinitely. Like I could, uh, you know, make the bullseye bigger. I could hit here, you could hit there, but there's also I could hit there, but I could hit in between those two points, and I could hit in between those two points. Uh, so th there's an infinite number of ways to hit the bullseye. So how do we count it that way with that, that uh, classic definition of probability? Number of ways the thing can happen over number of ways all things can happen. Um, well... Though there's an infinite number of ways to hit the bullseye, the space that there is is finite. We can only hit within a certain area, and uh, there, the whole board only has a certain area. So if we find the, the ratio of this area to the largest, to the whole board's area, we'll find what portion of the board is the bullseye, and therefore what probability there is of hitting the bullseye. Now, assuming that we will always hit the dartboard somewhere, uh, that we won't wind up hitting here or off on the wall or uh, some other person just kind of sitting off to the side. We'll always hit the dartboard. What's the probability of getting a bullseye? Um, we'll take the area of the bullseye and divide it by the area of the whole board. And how do we find the area of squares? Well, it's pi r squared. So we need to find the radius of each. So this is going to be a 6 inch radius. And this is going to be a quarter inch radius. Quarter inch radius. Okay. So the radi the uh, the area of the bullseye is going to be pi times one quarter of an inch squared over pi times six inches squared. Pi's will cancel each other. We're going to get one sixteenth over. 36, okay, we'll multiply 1 16th by the reciprocal of 36, so we get 1 16th times 1 over 36, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so let's pull out the calculator, it's a good idea, 16 times 36, 1 out of 81. So if you just were able to somehow randomly throw a dart at the board um, and always hit the dart board somewhere, it looks like one out of every 81 times we should expect to get the bullseye. Uh, so it looks like maybe also you could say in a different way, it would take 81 of these bullseyes to fill up the whole board. So, um, and that's just kind of based on some rough research I did on dart boards. I don't know if these are exactly right. Uh, I know 18 inches is pretty close, but I don't know about a, a, a half inch, but uh, that's the best I could do. Right. So anytime you have shapes and you want to know what's the probability that uh, such and such a thing will happen within uh, some part of that shape, you just find out how what fraction that part takes up of the whole, okay. just like this. So find the area of each thing, divide the smaller area by the large area, there you go. Um, all right, so that is the, uh, the last of 10.3, um, and I'll begin another video for 10.4. Thanks for watching.